beach soccer and no one come on and ed and air or gun in your perspective segment and you can be part of the conversation on social media at Inka tv ghana you can join us at there now and then i'm privileged to be speaking to uh jidodo rubin ajahu you know asu emma sunset sports keta or sign a uh, vice chairman emma ghana beach soccer uh, clubs union or no ewa man is an in a via a uh, zoom na ya jini perspective and uh, when it comes to a uh, beach soccer in ghana uh Jiro, good morning yeah good morning and thanks so much for having me all right um we are privileged to be speaking to you this morning uh, in the first place uh, Bani Beach Soccer, Kwan uh, Ben Soa, Nase Yie Ben Kwan Aadu Mwishimu. Sorry, I don't speak the language, okay. so if we can just... Uh, oh, all right, it. so what I want to inquire from you is when you decided to venture into beach soccer in Ghana? Well, we started beach soccer. Uh, we are one of the founding uh, members of the then Ghana Beach Soccer Association, so that should be about... Uh, 2011 2012 that was when we started beach soccer okay so from that time 2011 to date what what can you report to us, or what can you see about the state of beach soccer in ghana today well uh beach soccer today is under the ghana population uh, we are still in the formative stages uh because it's just been this is the second season under the ghana football association mm -hmm. But from the period we started beach soccer till now, um, the development of the sport has been uh, very inconsistent or I'll say erratic. Uh, at the point, things will seem to be going well, but at the point, there's always some setback or problems that we encounter. So it's not been a smooth ride, but then uh, the evidence is there. There's been a couple of uh, pointers that will show that we've made some strides. For instance, uh, We've uh, seen the national team play at the AFCON on two or three occasions. Uh, we've seen uh, my club, Sunset Sports, winning the uh, biggest African club competition. So those are the positives. But generally, it's been a little bit difficult. Okay. So do you attribute these inconsistencies in uh, beach soccer promotion in the country to popularity or the lack of interest by the Ghanaian populace? Do you attribute that to the inconsistencies that you, you mentioned? Yeah, but partly, uh, but the bane of sports in Ghana is not about popularity or lack of interest. It's about official doom showing interest in every aspect of sport. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you need the contribution to be spread across. And, you know, in Ghana, like you did your introduction, you mentioned lesser known sports. Uh, that has been the major bane of sports in the country. But when you come to where I come from, uh, Keta, mm -hmm. it's a coastal community interest is there especially on match days when we are playing beach soccer but you don't get to see that interest transcend into maybe commitments to develop the sports by official doom and all that so i would not say interest because beach soccer is a very interesting sport when you go to the beach on a weekend uh, it's a family environment uh, on the beaches playing sports and having fun it's so enjoyable so the interest is there but I think that official doom hasn't done enough to promote the sports or to help develop the sports. Okay. So, so w once you talk about the fact that the interest is there and you are the CEO of Sunset Sports in Keta, uh, I would like to find out from you how you've been able to sustain your team and how you've been able to whip up interest in support of your team. How have you been running your team? Well, uh, that's a big question. Uh, it's mostly sacrifice. You need to and uh, have a scale of preference uh, or no no scale of preference uh, maybe you have to let go of something sacrifice a lot to uh, continue to support the sport because uh, in beach soccer you don't have uh, major revenue streams or like unlike normal football where you transfer players or you have gate proceeds or a major sponsorship that would help you support the club so it's basically about sacrifice and passion because uh, like I said earlier, I'm from Keta, we are from a coastal community, and in the area of sports, we are deprived. For now, beach soccer is the limelight for Keta in sports, so that has been a major reason. It's going to be difficult to just say, okay, this is not uh, bringing the desired results, I want to let go. So uh, I'll say passion and then uh, the desire to uh, see the sports grow. That is what is uh, keeping us in the game till now. 
Okay, so let's, let's focus on beach soccer infrastructure. Do we have enough in the country to support beach soccer infrastructure? Do you have, speeches, do you have pitches? Do you have equipment? Do you have facilities that aid uh, this particular lesser known sport? No, uh, we don't have any uh, international standard beach soccer arena in Ghana. And I think that is disappointing because... But, but um, do, do you have some of the pitches at, at all? We play on the beach. It's just the natural beaches that okay. we use. Uh, you don't uh, have to develop, uh, or you don't need huge money to develop an arena. Mm -hmm. uh, you only need the natural beaches and then uh, probably some temporal uh, logistics that you need to add to the beach to create an arena. The arena, uh, since it's on the beach, you cannot uh, maybe put concrete or whatever that is needed. So it's quite disappointing that uh, now we've not done anything in that area and uh looking at the the, the beach space in ghana the coastal the lands uh, the land on the beaches in ghana i think that we should uh reconsider our priorities and then focus on some of these things uh, it's not about just the, the sport it's about uh, maybe promoting tourism mm. uh, on a weekend like this uh, you have a lot of visitors to ghana they should have alternatives in what they want to do as entertainment so when you have beach soccer going on in a very nice space, I'm sure that uh, in that regard, you are also putting Ghana on a different perspective. And uh, I keep mentioning Keta because that is where our focus is. Uh, if you look at Keta, there's been talk about tourism over and over again, but there's no uh, highlights in the area of tourism for Keta. Or there's nothing to point to that this is what Keta is focused on in the area of tourism. But Keta is lucky to have a very large beach space so some of these things are uh, areas that we think that our leaders, especially our local leaders, uh, should prioritize or sh to pay attention to so that we can at least be looking to uh, make some extra revenues when we are talking about uh, development or something in that regard. Uh, the um, Big Soccer Arena project recently, the Ghana Football Association mentioned that they are considering having a pre, uh, an arena at Pram Pram, at the Ghanaman Soccer Center of Excellence. I think that uh, that is not where we should be at this point because traditionally beach soccer is played in the coastal areas and uh, Pram Pram, though is a coastal area, they are not noted for anything regarding the spot. So, so, so uh, the, the proposed site that they are planning to build, is it a beach? Is it along the beach? No, it's not along the beach. It's at the Ghanaman Soccer Center of Excellence, uh, where the uh, Ghana football, uh, the football mm. association have their facilities. Facility. That is where they want to develop the beach soccer arena. Uh, I'm sure that the committee is in discussions with them, uh, led by Yawan Pufankra, and uh, maybe they would uh, reconsider uh, that proposal or that uh, thought to have the arena there. Hmm. All right. So in, in terms of, I want us to situate this discussion in the proper context. In terms of the coastline, we have a vast coastline from western region to the Volta region. Uh, beaches are there. So the beach is there already. What and what ought to be added to it to make it standard or international to, to, to that particular standard for some of these games to take play, uh, place there? All right, uh, let me give you a perspective. Uh, when we uh, went to some of, uh, some of the international tournaments we attended, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, uh, at the Copa Lagos tournament, they use uh, scaffolds for their stands. Okay. They have scaffolds they use to create stands during the tournament. So there are standard stands that you can comfortably sit and cheer. Okay. Uh, but then in uh, uh, Ghana like this, uh, the picture uh, you're showing, I'm sure that is Keta. Mm -hmm. There's nothing of the sort. If you can see, it's just an empty beach with erected canopies and all of that. So those are the areas that we should consider to have proper stands at the beach to create a proper inner perimeter to create a proper playing surface and all of this is just uh, maybe about leveling the sand uh, uh, getting the right measurements and then uh, barricade the place have uh, pitch panels around to create the inner perimeter or um, the technical area and then also to have scaffolds to create the stands and aside that we are looking at the on-site activities at the beach that is what makes beach soccer interesting. Maybe create fun parks around the place so that when uh, they have people at the beach, like in stadiums, people go to get drinks and all that in stadiums, they can also have similar experiences at the beach. That is all is needed. I don't think it takes so much, though. 
uh, we just need to have uh, probably maybe if you want it in the central region or in the Vota region, you just have to contact officials for land to be allocated and uh, we work in that regard. Uh, we should note that the beaches don't allow that you erect permanent structures. So nobody is asking that uh, they should allocate you sums of money to construct a stadium on the beaches. But uh, we need logistics that would be erected on March days. And after matches, I'm sure that we can do away with them and then help uh, uh, the promotion of the sports.